Well, Brother Timothy, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 27, He that is greedy for gain troubles his own house. Now note it, the Bible says his own house and not anyone else's. Again, it continues in verse 29. And it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he listens to the prayers of the righteous. Cactus, sincerely, I don't know the reason why you invited me here and you're quoting all the Bibles to me. I don't need Bible quotations. My brother is the one that is evil. In fact, he is the one that is very close to Satan. He is the one that needs all the quotations you can quote. Not only Proverbs, you can quote from other books. To well, him. Well, I, I have listened to your brother. And that is exactly what I said for you. And now that I have listened to you as well, I think I know exactly what the problem is. You see, he is your only brother and is the head of the family. And I know that in the past he has done exactly as you have requested. He has been granting all your requests. As you have admitted before me here, his level of maturity. But now I think that the issue is simple. He's becoming really worried about the high level of your prodigal nature. And as the head of the family, it is his duty to protect the family's legacies and inheritance. Uh, Cactus, uh, don't see it as if I'm cutting you. But I want to know exactly what my brother told you. Is he not ready to give me the land? I want to know. Not until you have been able to explain exactly what you did with the money you collected from the sale of the other family lands that you have sold in the past. I think it will be very, very difficult for your brother to grant you unhindered access to that piece of land. My advice to you, Brother Timothy, is simple. Go home and make peace with your brother. Go and reconcile with your brother. And as you do that, take this advice from the Lord. Beware of covetousness, for a man's life doesn't consist of all the material things he possesses. You must remember this at all times, Brother Timothy, at all times. Shall we pray now? Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we I am an evil man. I know. And I can tell you, I know the customs and the traditions of the Igbos very much. The Igbos do not present egg as cola. This is an egg that you brought. What are we doing with an egg? This is just an egg. But it will kill your brother in line with your demands. But before we go down to uh, undiluted spiritual build-up, I would like to ask you some important questions. You are a wifi and a demon. There is the Dibi of Amago, the great sea of our land. Okalamod, Okalamo. I'm listening, sir. This is a white egg. Mm -hmm. It came from a black hen. Can you tell me why a black hen must lay a white egg? I always knew that black hens lay white eggs. I cannot say I know why. Do you know the reason your elder brother refused to release the land to you? Yeah, the reason is very simple. He is very wicked. He is evil. I disagree with you. Why? Your brother refused to give you the land because he rightly concluded that it would be useless. He also knows that you will sell the land 
just a, like you sold other pieces of land of the family. What are you saying? I want to understand you. Are you telling me to my face that you're not going to aid my brother as I prayed you already? Don't make a man. Only I can get boss. I know other places I can go. Timothy, you are the one that will take your brother's life. But remember, the blood is on your head. And on your head only. And not me. Hey, with, with all due respect, let that be my headache. His blood will be on my head, no problem. I'm ready. I want him dead. Take this egg and leave it where your brother will see it. Once he sets his eyes on this egg, the forces of Osi Kanku will inflict him with deadly ailment. He will die a few days after. Remember, his blood is on your head. And on your head only. No problem. I like this. <laughs> I like this. His blood will be on my head, no problem. How much should I pay for this? Leave my presence. Don't you stop. Original. Mm. Timothy, what do you want me to do with this hot drink? Well, I, I came to see you as the head of the family, as my elder brother, to ask you for the very last time to grant me access to that parcel of land. I have something important to do with the land. I mean something that can be beneficial to the family. Why are you denying me access? Why are you laying pegs everywhere? Why are you blocking everywhere? I want to have access to the land. Please. That's why I'm here. Okay. And that's why I brought you the drink. Okay, I understand. Then, I'll take you to the chapel. Take me to the chapel to do what? Yes, I want you to go and swear. Just stand before the Blessed Sacrament and swear on your life that you're not going to sell the land as you did to the other ones. Simple. Then I'll grant you access to the land. Ikena, to the best of my knowledge, what we face here is uh, is, is family issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Almost all families have their problems. And they are solving their problems. Secretly. It is only in this family that any small thing you run to the bishop, you run to the priest, to the cactus. And now you are involving even the blessed sacrament. Why are you like this? Uh, Timothy. Let me ask you a simple question. Do you remember the number of lands we inherited from our father? Okay, in case you have forgotten, there were three number. You sold two and you squandered the money. Nobody asked you a question about that. But go and remark it somewhere. Unless you are ready to go and swear before the blessed sacrament. Where you fail to do that, I am not ready to grant you access to the land. Are you? Yes. No, is that what you are saying? Bam. Ah. I got back the Okay. We shall see. Uh, Timothy, my brother, come on. <laughs> it seems you have forgotten something. Manya Kono. Do you come, Manya Gane? As you have refused to handle this matter, yes. as a macho man that you are. As the head of the family. Yes. No problem. I will handle it as a masquerade. <laughs> masquerade indeed. No. The guy for us and what about Buddha Madone? It is about time I started coming his prodigality. He cannot be allowed to continue like this. Are you 
not going to tell me what is wrong with you? Eh? Why are you moody all day? And why haven't you eaten your food? Olushi, I can confirm to you that everything is okay. There's no problem. I have been moody all day because I've been thinking about the future. Which future are you thinking? Is it your own future or the future of the family? The future is the future, whether it is the future of the family or my future or even your own future. The future is the same. Do me one favor. Go back into the room and sleep. I'm okay. My husband, if you know you are okay, then eat the food. That's the only way you can convince me that you are, everything is okay with you. Eat your food. For the past two hours, I've kept this food before you, and you've not touched it. Eh? Is that a command or what? You will. No, I know you, I can't command you. I'm only telling you and begging you to eat your food. If you are begging me, then I'm also begging you to leave me alone. Go back into the house and sleep. I will eat the dinner when I want to eat the dinner. Understand that this man here is the head of this family. I am thinking. And I want to be left alone to think. Please. When you are done with your thinking, eat your food. Oh? I am going in to sleep. To sleep well. Good night. Sleep. Good night. Lay egg in the open. Attention, Uncle, please let's take him to the hospital. I can't understand even one thing from what you say. I suspect something is wrong with the father. My father just collapsed. That's what I'm saying, Uncle. We need to get him to the hospital. Please, he needs medical attention. Let's go. Uncle, come now. Yeah, please. Go. I don't know. He just came out and saw an egg right there. An and egg. he fainted. An egg? Where's the egg? I don't know what has become of the egg, but the egg was there. Please, I don't know what has hey. happened to my father. Hey. Oh, I saw an egg and that's it again. Let's take him inside. Papa, please get up. I know. Papa, just take it easy. Sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. We need to get to the hospital. Oh, my God. 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 Is this not the very egg you gave me? How did it come back to you? With it? How? The forces of Ose Kanko is closely associated with the forces of Ebruje Ebruna, which is one and the same as the forces of To and Fro. The egg is back now in its original position because all the things I installed in it have been taken. I call them properties of death and all these things are deposited in your brother now. Who is it? 
Can you look me in the eyes and give me this assurance that my brother Ikenna is going to die from this attack? Is he going to die? Timothy, mm -hmm. it had never happened before that properties of death were deposited in a man and he survives. I can tell you, he will face what others have faced. But whatever happens to your brother is on your head. You have said that before and I agreed with you. His blood is going to be on my head. No problem. But I want you to give me your word on this. Look me in the eyes and give me this assurance that my brother is going to die. Finish. Oyamu, eventually man. Don't come. Timothy, leave my presence. If I allow a beautiful damsel like you to handle her deals in a supermarket like this, then I have no reason to call myself the slick man of the city. I don't understand the meaning of your interference, sir. The meaning is that your bill is on me. So I want you to go back and do some more shopping, okay? I'm gonna pay, yes, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay the bill for you, alright? Don't worry, I'm okay with these ones. Thank you. Human wants are insatiable, and that is the conclusion of the economist. And I so much believe him yet. That's where I want you to go back, do some more shopping. I want you to understand that your bill is on me. I'm gonna pay anything, anything at all, okay? Come on, there's nothing there. Just move it with a lady, you can, you know, the place. I'm gonna pay. It's, a, it's, it's coming from my heart. I don't know what to say to you guys. You've really made my day. And I must say I'm so excited. I'm so happy that you're excited. I'm gonna call you as we agreed and I hope we can start a good relationship. I want it to flow naturally. Thank you once more. You're more than welcome. you met this child in the supermarket that paid your bills that is making you this excited? If why are you always throwing yourself at men? Listen to me precious. I don't throw myself at men. I was on my own. I was actually about paying for the things I bought at the supermarket. This cute guy walked up to me and he said he wants to take care of my bills. And it was so romantic the way he said it. I, I instantly started liking him. So what do you want me to do? What? Doesn't mean that you will never disappoint me. Now listen, there are things going on in this town that you don't know. So you better be careful. I have no business with what happens in town. My concern 
is that guys like me a lot. And they are always ready to take care of my bills. My bill at the supermarket today was 7,000 plus. He asked me to go back and do some more shopping. I declined, but he insisted. I went back and the money came up to 27,000 naira plus. He paid without any objection. So tell me the reason why I won't be serious with such a guy. Tell me. You know, I readily confirm that you've made up your mind to sleep with this guy you just met only a few hours ago. Am I right, my dear friend? Do I look like a pretender like all of you? He has already given me an appointment at the Olive Suits and Spa. And I will be with him tomorrow and I will fire him down. I can make you part of it if you want. They are two in numbers and his friend is also loaded like my guy. So I can make you part of the game if you're ready. God forbid! Heaven knows that I'm not going to take part in such sinful arrangements. Now listen, as you continue to wallow in your sin, <laughs> remember that no sin goes unpunished. <laughs> Mrs. Preacher, Madam Pastor, please, this is my life. And I have every reason to live my life the way I want to live it. This is not your life. Please, stop preaching to me because you're not my mother. You are not! Now listen, Jesus says, take heed and beware of the living of the Sadducees and Pharisees. I pray you understand the scripture before it's too late for you. I've told you my own. Whatever. I can assure you that you can't define the term romance because they're war. I know what? You're gonna pay the price for being a tat. Maybe you're scaring me. What's the meaning of that? Ah! What are you guys doing with knives and surgical gloves? Do you know the difference between life and death? Do you know? Life and death? What's the meaning of that? Are you a lesson, woman? We have no time to waste. In your next life, let the world be you. Come on! Come on! Everything must be under control. Cut off the breasts and the kidneys and every other sensitive parts that we need. Alright, but we have reasons to believe that her kidney may not be in perfect condition because she's been smoking heavily. Our concern is not the quality or the condition. Just get it done. It's alright, boss. We'll do that. It's taking so much time. Um, Uncle Timothy, 
Oh, is that my brother Timothy? Timothy, yes. I am very happy you are here at last. Timothy, for three days now. Ah, Sorry. I've been sick. And you've never come to come and see me. Is that fair, Timothy? Uh, you can, I don't know why you are sounding that way. My wife came back and told me that the sickness was not ordinary. In fact, she said it was an attack. And I knew that this is not something that these doctors can handle. Because when we go to the hospital, they will give you drip and they will begin to give you check -out. It will not work. I, on my own, decided to travel to Mudora to go and uh, bring you something that you will take and you are back on your feet. I got to Mudora and God punished me. I met them in the middle of the festival of Ziran. And nobody was willing to talk to me. Everybody was busy. They were consumed in the, in the festival. I decided to wait. The festival ended only yesterday in the middle of the night. And this morning I met this man that gave me this, this medicine. That I want you to drink now. If you drink this thing now, you are back on your feet. Take it. My brother. He now not have anything to do with a child. Remember. I am a Christian. I don't do charms. Esther, is there a way you can tell your father that there is a difference between charms and the medicine? This is not a charm. This is a potent herbal medicine from Umudora that will heal him. Why is he calling it charm? Uh, uh, Papa, listen to him. He said it's not a charm. Timothy, I know that you hurt me because I did not grant you access to that land. But let me tell you one thing. I'm no more interested in that land. Because between yesterday and today, our late father and three other members of our family who were dead keep appearing to me in my dream. And uh, it is now very clear to me that any time from now, I'll join my ancestors. Yes. But why are you talking that way? You are still a very strong man. You are full of life. Nothing will happen to you. Don't say that. You are seeing our ancestors. Why are they appearing? Please. Take the medicine that I brought. Papa, you are strong. You are strong. Nothing will happen to you. Timothy. Just remember that I have only one child. Esther here. It's my only daughter, but for sure, she will not remain here forever. She will soon get her own house. But Timothy, I want you to do one thing for me. Just take very good care of her, please. Papa, why are you sounding like this? Why are you sounding like this? You're strong. Nothing will happen to you. And, and there is a medicine already here. Esther. Papa. You will not understand. Timothy here is my only brother. And your only uncle. I know him. But for sure, God will take care of you. <gasps> This friend of mine that came into your office since yesterday, she has not returned and her number is not going. May I know the name of this your friend? Thank you. Her name is Eve Broderick. She's tall and dark in complexion. Eve Broderick. Excuse me. Oh, 
I'm sorry, my dear. But we never had any guests with Annie. No, 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 no. Her name is not going to appear as a guest because she didn't come here to lodge. She actually came to see a friend of hers. Did you in any way see anybody that looks like her? That's what I mean. What is going on here? Sir, she said she's looking for a friend of hers. Name is Roderick. Yes, if Roderick. She said this her friend came into this hotel since yesterday. And ever since then, her number has not been true. And she has not returned. And I have checked our guest list. She's not in our list. So how did you know that? This said friend of yours came into this hotel. She told me where she was going to. And when she eventually came here, she sent me a test, which I still have in my phone, telling me of how beautiful this place is. We were actually communicating when she ran out of communication. I don't know what has happened to her. The only thing I can say is that it is possible that your friend is with a guest in one of the rooms. You should wait for her. You see, people come into this hotel to relax. I don't think it's wise you know, for us to go disturbing our guests just because we are looking for a particular friend of yours. I can permit you to wait for her in the reception, okay? You're welcome. Who's he? He's our visiting supervisor. Visiting supervisor? Yeah. So there's nothing you can do? Exactly. What is the situation? There's a girl waiting at the reception. She said she's looking for the girl we butchered because the butchered girl had told her she was coming here. What did you guys tell her? She's been handled. I'm only calling to know if you have your consent to convert her equally. No, 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 no. She may have told someone else that she is there. Don't do anything to her. Let her leave the facility in one piece so that we don't face a situation where we have more questions than answers. Hope you guys get the drift. You are the boss. I'll get back to you. I don't know the secret. Her meat is looking different from that of other girls that were fried before now. It is possible she may have used a lot of chemicals. That's why the flesh looks different. I want you to continue frying until the color changes to the normal beef. Yeah? It's okay. This feeling that your said friend may have gone somewhere else. No. She can't tell me that she's here when she's not here. She told me she was here. You see, many girls in this town derive pleasure you know, by telling people that they slept in a hotel. And your friend is surely one of them because I've caught all the rooms that are presently occupied. And there's no girl like um, Eve Broderick anywhere in this hotel with any guest. Then where could she be? You may still stay a little longer, but I'm telling you the situation of things. There's no girl like that in this hotel. You know, you can, well, you need to locate where she is, okay? And of course, if you have some money, you can go to the bush bar and have yourself some barbecue, okay? Do have a sweater. You're welcome. If I should rely on the strength of the information written down here, it would be very hard to obtain a search warrant against a hotel as big as Olive Suit and Spa. You see, you are merely speculating, and judges do not issue search warrants based on speculative statements. 
You know, when I was looking at the visiting supervisor, I know for sure that there is something he was hiding. So all I can say is that uh, I will investigate the matter. But you see, all these girls who are into the habit of following men they are not acquainted with should know that there are many evil men moving around. Yeah, yeah. But I just want to be sure that if my friend is fine wherever she is, not only Eve has this habit of sending me pictures of what is happening around her, she has not done this since yesterday. So I know she is not okay where she is. Inspector, do something, please! It's alright, so it's okay, she'll be alright, eh? Uh, the only thing I'll say is that we'll commence investigation immediately. And I'll brief you on the progress you make. No, I just calm down. Are you okay? Oh. Alright, sir, thank you very much. <laughs> Esther, you were there when your father made his last wishes. He asked you to listen to me because he knew I remain the only brother he has. This is two weeks since we buried your father in line with the customs and traditions of our people. And I want you to move over to my place because there is no way you will remain here. Why are you adamant to do that? Uncle, it is very difficult for me to leave my father's house that I've lived all my life. It's very difficult. Esther, there are things you just cannot say. Don't make me angry. Because if you make me angry, you will regret your life. Your father was my brother. And you have to understand that I want the best for you. You cannot remain here. Your father is no more. You want to live alone? A single girl living alone in a big house like this? So that all these useless tippers that drivers that are driving all these useless tippers around here will come here and be counting censors on my on my on my brother's daughter. It cannot happen. Come on, Lily. Okay. You have to move over to my place and you're moving today with me. Okay, Uncle, can you please give me at least just two weeks? You don't understand what I'm saying. I am not going to give you even one day, even one additional day I'm not giving you. You are moving over to my place and you're moving over as in right now. Okay? Uncle, please. My jam is in two weeks. I just need time to just sit down and prepare for my exams. After my exams, I will come. Only jump. Just jump. Even if you're preparing for Cambridge, is my roof leaking? But you cannot prepare the exam in my house. Why are you even standing here arguing with this girl? Stand up, my friend. I'm going to pack your things. I want to lock this door. I want to lock this door. Your father asked you to move over to my place. To listen to me in everything. That's what my father said. Listen to, listen to me in everything. And I'm telling you what I want. You are making me, you are standing, you are agreeing with me. Is Miss Gladys still there? Is this the area commander finally? Yeah. I thought you didn't want to answer me. I've been waiting for over 15 minutes. I'm sorry about that, Gladys. I actually left a meeting to take this call because I was told you sounded frantic. May I know what the problem is? Well, there is an inspector called Zaki that has been doing everything possible to run down my hotel. I don't know why. I want you to call him to order. The case that Inspector Zaki is handling Well, your inspector believes that the girl in question disappeared from my hotel. I don't know what informed that conclusion. He's been coming to my hotel every day to ask questions and I feel that is embarrassing. I want that to stop. Has he explained the reason why he is coming to your hotel? I will not stoop so low as to ask him anything. I just want you to talk to him, please. I spent over 300 million naira to set up that facility. I wouldn't want anybody to come up from nowhere to run that down for me. I have not recovered my investment yet. Please ask him to stop before my customers run. You have my word on this. Nobody will ever come near there again. Thank you very much, officer. You are welcome, Gladys. Try and see me later in the evening. Consider it done. 
we run this city. If that man comes to the hotel again to ask those stupid questions, tell him to go to hell. I've already made up my mind to play rough with him. No, that won't be necessary. Do not play rough with anybody. We run this land. Yeah. We wouldn't want the land to run us. Always. <laughs> Back to work, guys. What do you want me to do for you? We friend the I want to have something, something like sham, that will make it possible for Esther to forget all her father's properties. In fact, if possible, I want you to give me something that will make it possible for Esther not to ever remember in her lifetime that she ever spent any night in any compound that was her father's compound. Before. But why would you want to manipulate an innocent girl? Because I want to sell the property. I want to make it mine. Esther lives with me. I know her very much. I can say I know her inside out. How difficult she could be. I know that she's going to be a problem. She's going to be a stumbling block. And that is why I want this charm. Something that will make her to be blind. Let her become so blind that even when she's looking at me, she will not be able to understand what I'm doing. You can use mere intimidation to do that. The girl fears you. And you can order her to keep quiet and she will obey. We are saying this thing because you don't know the girl. This is a girl I live with. There is always an extent mere intimidation can go. Esther is not the kind of girl you humble with mere intimidation. She lives with me. She's very smart. Very intelligent. I don't want to use intimidation. I want to use sham because I am convinced in my heart that sham will work faster. That's why I'm here. Timothy, let me warn you. All the things you are doing in your family shall backfire on you and on you only. I don't want to be a party to it. You would be party to it. Why would you be party to it? You are a native doctor. Okalamo or Kalamo. Doing your work as a native doctor. It will not backfire on you. You're always in your house. I am the one that always comes for your services. Give me the sham. It will backfire on me, no problem. I'm ready. Yeah. Please. Take this. Take her to a place where only the best of death shall be your witness. Give her this, and as she is holding it and asking you what to do with it, tell her that you are the owner of all her father left. As long as nobody is looking at both of you, she will accept it and we will sink into our heart as the valid truth of life. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> I remember something. What if I give her this charm and she refuses to even touch it? Don't misunderstand my question. I am asking because Esther is a girl I know. She is very smart, very intelligent, but very stubborn. I can give her this charm and she will refuse to touch it. And I want you to explain what happens if I give her this charm and she refuses to even touch it. If she refuses to touch it, proceed to make the statements as you are holding it and she is looking at you. It will work. The important thing is for her to set her eyes on this. This is why I like you. Because you always have a workable charm for almost all situations. 
I will do as you say. Yeah. And I want to give you one assurance. I will come back. What? Once, even, once it works, once even alone. Then. Olympian. Olympian. I'm sorry, officer, but I'm not happy with the way this matter is going. My friend is not yet back and nobody has seen her anywhere around. Why are we not taking this matter seriously? You see, I was asked to discontinue with the investigation. And there's no way you expect me to disobey my superiors. <sighs> what? Are you aware we're talking about somebody's sister here? Why are we not taking this matter the way we should? Okay, in the course of my investigation, I've managed to locate the taxi that took her to the hotel. You know, she went in there and she didn't come out. So the police should investigate this matter properly, please. It is possible she entered the hotel. Nobody is disputing that. But what I'm telling you is that she's no longer in the hotel. Before we were asked to discontinue with the case, we investigated the hotel. And in the course of our investigation, we searched the whole rooms in the hotel. We searched everywhere. And she's not there. You want me to say that she's there when I know she's not there? Where is she? Where is my friend? If she's not in there, where is she? I don't know. And I cannot say I know what I don't know. Oh. Officer, can you give me reason for me to believe that police are still our friends? Gosh. This is your friend. <clears throat> Esther, what are your plans for your life? Hey, Auntie, I'm hoping that I'll pass my job and then I'll get admission into the university. So when I get into the university, I will now be able to decide what I want to do. Yes, you are. <laughs> mm. I have a friend. He confided in me that he's looking for a wife. And I know he is serious. So I was thinking about a few minutes and... Um, and uh, Auntie, I'm sorry. But I'm not thinking of that. You're not thinking about marriage? What are you up to? Do you want to remain in this house forever? Auntie, I just told you that I want to go to the university and further my education. Go to university? On whose account? Oh, are you hoping that my husband will pay your fees to, to the university? Listen to me, Esther. The man I'm talking about is the best teller in the market. And I know he will make the best husband. So, you better make up your mind though, because you are going to marry him. I have no choice. Auntie, are you going to force me? I said I don't want to, to get married yet. I want to go to school. Esther, I'm talking and you're talking. Eh? Come on, close your mouth. I'm talking and you're talking. What happened? Why are you leaving her? Look at this girl. I found a husband for her. And she said that she, she's not going to marry me. Nine. I have found a husband for her. His name is Obedo, the best fellow in the market. So I said, you can make up your mind because you're not going to marry your bed. You must marry your bed, the teller. You must marry him. Kill him, is finished. You know you have no choice. Clap. You marry him. Clap for yourself. Marriage maker. Marriage fixer. You have going to prepare a husband for my niece. A man, a teller at the market, and you are proud of it. Placing your shoulders as if you have done something fantastic. You ever think that my people are, are like low class of people? They have no class. But anyhow, Easter. Follow me. Follow me. Timothy, what is the meaning of this? Where are you going with her? I can't go and walk in on her. Yes. Um. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Esther, you know you are the only child of my late brother Ikenna. And as a good man, I know that the time is ripe for me to show you all the things that your father left behind. All your father's property and belongings. You need to know all. Uh, Uncle, I actually 
actually think that I know all his property. Or which of them do you think I don't know? You don't know. Let me show you. Look at me. This thing you're seeing here is your father's shop. I want to take it. My God forbid. Uncle, my father was a good Christian. He was never in two terms. Are you not telling me that you know my brother more than me? Ever before he became your father, he was originally my brother. He acquired many charms for self-protection. Just like all the men that are in this land, that are, all of them are going to church. All of them are making charms for self-protection. But among all the charms your father kept, this one you are seeing here is the only one that a woman can handle. And that is why I went to where he kept it, to go and retrieve it. I actually spent so much money to retrieve this charm from where your father kept it. And I brought you here today because I want to give it to you so that it can start to protect you the way it was protecting your father. It's your father's property. Mba, Mba, Uncle, I, um, my father said I should obey you. But this particular one, I know you're leading me astray. Uh, if the charm was supposed to protect him, why did he die? I cannot touch any charm. Uh. <laughs> your father, you can me. He didn't keep any property. He has no belongings in his life. Do you agree? Even that house where he was living before he died, that house was not his house. It is not his house. We never be his house. That house actually is my house that I built with my money. Right on the land where our mother used to cultivate kokoyam. And even now in Akwede. It is my house. Do you agree? Your father has nothing. So up to tomorrow, just to understand that everything that belongs to our family is actually mine. You can never lay claim to anything. Understood? Because I'm sure you are charming and you will call me. Sexy, sexy, sexy. Sexy ladies run the city. And when sexy ladies run the city, men are permanently in trouble. <laughs> There's this saying that men rule this world. That this is a man's world. And from our experience in Temple of Sexy Vampires, men are simply pretenders. I'm sorry, We are the women that rule this world. Gladys, Gladys. The light that shines endlessly. Oh. The only iron lady in the city. <laughs> you know what? We're here to celebrate. I called us today for us to celebrate. My hotel. My enemies wanted to close down my hotel. It's not possible. The plan was so badly plotted, but it will never happen. <laughs> so I called us today to celebrate because I am happy. And I am happy to announce today that Olive Sweets and Spa is open! <laughs> and business has become as lucrative as it was before. That is excellent. This calls for celebration mm -hmm. and you know what I already have my plans hmm. and what are your plans you know we can't just sit here like ladies with no class to celebrate the liberation of your exotic hotel olive suits and spas I suggest we go to that same hotel and get boys that are so hot and engage them all through the night oh. <laughs> if you ask me that is no a bad idea because sexy vampires is all about sex. Oh my goodness. Sex, sex, sex. And you know what glad is? Don't worry about the bill. I'll write it all. Mm. That's you, girl. That's you. I like that. You know what? We are the movers and shakers in this city. And we have any men at our back and call. Yeah. On that note, I think we'll consider what Christy had just said. It's gonna be a hot, hot and sexy night, you know? Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, there's something I would like to discuss with you girls in this meeting. Something that happened in my estate yesterday. Anyway, 
let me relax. As we relocate into Olive Suit and Spa, <laughs> girls, we were aimed for hurt, sexy night girls. Yeah. We're not going anywhere until we pop this child. <laughs> Why are you smoking Gary in my house? Is there no food in this house? Uncle Auntie has refused to give me food to eat. I'm starving to death. I just need something in my stomach. Olushi has refused to give you food? In this house? Where I have food enough? What is the meaning of that? He simply means that I'm not prepared to accommodate a woman who is not prepared to go into a woman in this house. Olushi. Esther here is my niece and she's a woman as we speak. What do you mean by she has, she has, she has refused to grow into a woman? As, as she's a dwarf in your sight. Even Ako? Nine. Only two days ago, I prepared a very expensive pot of soup in this house. And this girl, Esther, your so called niece, allowed the pot of soup to saw. Hmm. Esther, listen to me. You keep eating that pot of soup until it finishes. You finish the pot of soup, oh. Uncle, we all woke up in the morning to find out that the pot of soup had gone sour. Nobody knew what happened. I don't, I don't even know what happened. I don't know why auntie's holding me responsible for that. Mm, no. You see the girl you are defending? You see the girl you are defending before me? Listen to me, Esther. You will finish the pot of soup. Oh. You will finish the pot of soup in this house. You will finish it. Stupid girl. What's your problem, Maruchi? She must finish the pot of soup. Why are you being so hostile on this girl? Why are you doing this? This is my brother's daughter, huh? What's your problem? Why are you being so wicked? You know, most times when you behave, I begin to wonder where you kept your makeup, human sympathy. Soup that is generally confirmed to be sour, that is what you want my niece to be eating. Is she a pig? Or is it called a river maloka? Do you know how much I spent in cooking that soup? Is it your money? How much you spent? Is it your money that you spent in cooking the soup? Soup that is generally confirmed to be sour, that is what you want somebody to eat. Why are you so wicked? This is the reason why I look at all of you that I say you are Christians. I begin to wonder what kind of nonsense Christianity that is. Mrs. Preacher, Madam Pastor, please, this, this is, is my life, and I have, have every reason to live my life the way I want to live it. This is not your life. Please, stop preaching to me because you're not my mother. You are not! I know I tried my best to make her see reason, but she refused to understand. <laughs> my dear, I still do not come to terms with this whole confusion that Eve has gone missing. I don't believe it, and I don't want to believe it. You know, I have this feeling that the mighty people in this society have something to do with this mess. Mind how you talk. Freedom of speech has its limits. You don't seal your mouth, they'll seal it for you. Trust me, I'm not happy saying this. But if they're not part of this, how come the police will close the case of a missing person that is yet to be seen or have a clue of a whereabouts? Tell me! Well, I don't know. It's possible that Eve traveled to Dubai without telling anybody. Anything is possible. She's a babe. Eve has no international passport. Excuse me. How could you say such a thing like that? How would you want me to believe you that a big girl like Eve's got no international passport? How? You're talking about my roommate here. Sure, I can remember before her disappearance, she met with this Jew that was supposed to take her to Amsterdam, but because she got no international passport, she missed out. That was actually what she was planning to do before she got disappeared. <laughs> okay, fine. So, as you said that Eve did not travel abroad, where is she then? Where is she? Provide her now, where is she? Eve is in that hotel. You know, when I went there, I bribed the gates man, and he told me that, if at all Eve has left that place, then it should be with a tinted girl. So Eve is definitely in there. 
But I thought you said that the policeman searched the whole premises, I mean the whole rooms, and that she's nowhere to be found. So what are you now telling me? Stop this. How can you be this bad? Were you there when the policeman searched? So why should you conclude? So are you possibly saying that the policeman lied to you? For what? As what? Why should they lie to you? It's possible. Because the gate man knew when she entered in there, but could not tell when she left. That means Eve is inside there. And as long as the police refuse to reopen that, that case, <laughs> I see Olive Seuss and Spa as a very terrible place to be. Trust me. Well, that's your own point of view. As for me, Olive Suits and Spa is one of the best hotels around town. And any girl could go to any lens to spend the night with a man in that hotel. Stephanie, oh please, what is all this? See, this is what has caught up with Eve. Do you understand? This, just take it. I'm sorry to say this. This greed of a thing is what we actually land with girls into trouble. Anyway, if you like, you go yeah, like, I like. Lelo, oh I am a fofo. So so gone and then many. Yeah, I started doing that. I'm fine. Look at Esther. She has surely developed into her mother. I cannot forgive myself if I leave another man to eat what is directly under me. Esther! Yes, Uncle. Come. You see, Esther, if you need anything in the future, don't ever go to my wife. Come and ask me directly, and it will be handled. It's a promise. Thank you, Uncle. Yes, and uh, go in and uh, have something to eat. Be fast about it. I want to take you to the forest. There is a particular family boundary that you need to know. You are an adder in this family and uh, you should be made to understand our boundaries. So go in there and uh, eat something and be ready. You can see I'm already dressed, so don't waste so much time. Good. Thank you, Uncle. Spend a few minutes of your time. My madam would like to talk to you. And um, who is your madam? Um, she's in the car waiting for you. I bet you're not gonna regret meeting her. Okay. Um, sweetie, just um, one minute, please. Excuse me, I beg your pardon. You really wanna do that? Don't get me. you would be wondering why um, I called you but please don't be scared okay I saw you coming out with a young lady 
So I couldn't help but to ask my boys to call you for me. I still, I still don't know what you want from me. My name is Gladys and the President and Chief Executive Officer of Olive Suites and Spa. And you look like a young man that has got enough energy to go all out. I would say you should dismiss that girl and come with me. I want to change your life. I want to give you an experience of your life. Uh, uh, my name is Isaac. And I know exactly what you want. I can assure you I'm equal to it. Hmm? But my problem is the man you have with you. One day I feel somehow when I start, you know, doing something with you. These are my boys. And I don't think you expect me to be having something to do with my boys, do you? Well, dismiss the girl and uh, come with me. Okay? Okay. I want to show you what life is all about. One moment. I'm waiting. I'll be back. Hi, Chess. Can you explain the meaning of this blatant assault on my personality? Can you? The only personality here. <laughs> Is the MD CEO of Olive Sudan's class. And then there's the lady sitting in that Porsche car back there. And um, you know what, baby? I'm living with her right now. Are you out of your mind, Hyson? Are you out of your mind? You want to abandon me here and follow a lady you don't even know? Hyson? Hyson? Wow. Well, baby, you know, really, I'll come back for the car. So you can take a cab home. Olive suits and spa as a very terrible place to be. Trust me. Hyson has abandoned me here and follow a lady he identified as the CEO of the Olive suits and spa. Uh -huh. Same hotel where it disappeared. What's the name of this? Something very strange happened today, and even as I'm making this call, I still don't want to believe it happened. <sighs> Gee, you sound worried. What's the problem? My dear, Hyacinth abandoned me here and followed the lady he identified as the CEO and president of Olive Suits and Spa. <laughs> Are you kidding me or something? I am not kidding you. I am telling you exactly what happened. Listen, he said I should find my way home, that he would come for his car later, Entered their car and left. That was it. I said did that. You know what? Just come to my place. I'm home, okay? Don't worry, come. What should we be doing at your place? I am telling you that he was so charmed by this lady that he left his car open. You know what? Just leave the car there. Nothing will happen to it, okay? You know, this could be a link for us to resolve Eve's disappearance. Please come back home. Alright, whatever. Come here. Uncle, you said you wanted to show me an important boundary, but you have not showed me anything. What are we doing here? Esther, I can handle it. 
I'm looking at you. I know you can handle it. I want us to handle it together. I don't know. What, what, what do you want us to handle together? Okay, let me just show you. Like, I hold it. Why are you touching me like this now? You're my uncle. You're not supposed to hold me like that. Esther, understand something. My wife has already made up her mind that she's going to destroy you. She hates you so much. I am the only one that can protect you. I'm the only one that can destroy all her evil plans against you. But I want us to have an understanding so that I can go all out to protect you. I want you to be my secret lover. Eh? Uncle? Uncle, just, just listen to yourself, Uncle. Uh -uh, uncle, it cannot happen now. You're my uncle. Why can you want to be my lover at the same time? What is an abomination? No, Esther, why would you use such a word? Abomination? What are you talking about? Do you know what abomination is? Let me educate you. Abomination simply means when something bad happens and people start discussing it, then other people will hear it. It becomes abomination. When something bad happens, no matter how bad it is, and nobody talks about it, nobody hears it, it can be abomination. Forget the fact that you are a small girl that was born and raised right under my nose. Now you are a big woman. And I am not sure. You can do this. It is going to be a secret between you and I forever. Nobody will hear about it and it will never have any effect on us. No. Uncle, it will not happen. No. God forbid. Ah, my father said I should obey you. But, but not in this kind of thing now, Uncle. Esther. Don't provoke me. Remember you just passed your jump. You need support, financial support. Somebody who will see you through the university. I am your uncle and I am the one that will do that. But for me to have, have this motivation, you need to open up so that I can have this understanding with you. It is not going to cost us everything. If we are really here, nobody will know about it. We do it here and it will remain here. I am going to Come back here. Uncle! 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 Do you ever think that I will ever leave you? To get out of my sight. Uncle, no. I have made a move. Do you know how long it took me to make, make this move? Uncle, make this decision? Uncle, please leave me alone. Uncle, uncle. Uncle. Is it because you have access to my office or what? Why will you always walk in here to make empty reports? Is that what you think, officer? That this report is empty? Of course it is empty. An adult is another adult and they decide to go somewhere to talk or do whatever they like. Why would you involve the police in something like that? Officer, there is more to it. This lady is the owner of the same hotel where our friend Eve entered and has not returned until date. Hyacinth here is my boyfriend and I don't want to lose him, not for anything. So what do you want from the police? It's possible that they have taken him to do to him whatever they have done to Eve. Why don't you get your men ready to go to the hotel and find out what is happening there? Listen, we are not going to invade any place until if after 24 hours you have not seen the guy. Officer, 24 hours is such a long time to wait now, they might have killed him before then. Exactly. That's the evidence we need. So that will, that will force the police to step in there and arrest everybody and seal up the place. But let's pray it doesn't come to that. Officer, I can't believe this. Are you telling me you're going to fold your hands and wait until somebody dies before you do something? Officer, is that what you're saying? Listen to me, my friend. Police don't work like that. Police work with evidence. I mean, solid evidence, not something based on rumors and hearsay. Do you understand? We are monitoring their information and we will always feed you back with the offshoot of the investigation. You understand me? I'm sorry to say this, officer, but you know, this is the reason why many people are ready to tell you that police are not their friends. Gosh. <laughs> well, if they fail to see the police, if they, if they think the police is not their friend, now they're savvy. Let them wait until they are attacked by armed robbers. Let them not call the police. Bravo, over. Uh, not to the food, food. Yes. That's two hundred thousand naira. 
my benevolent pay for your extreme poor performance. 200,000 Naira? But this wasn't what we agreed. Whatever we agreed it was on the premise that you were going to take me to wherever I wanted to be. But you proved to be weaker than those people that I call weaklings. You know what? Just get yourself out of this bed this minute, out of this hotel, before you see me. Because I might not be as pretty as I look. I can be very evil. See you? Is there anything about you that I've not seen? You know, if I get into that room and I come out, and I still see you on this bed, you would have yourself to blame. Because you will not be able to explain what happened to you. As a matter of fact, whatever that happened here today must be kept close to your heart. And let me tell you something, in this city, there's a temple called the Temple of Sexy Vampires. If you don't want me to sacrifice you on the altar of that temple, you would better keep your mouth shut. Because the very day you open your mouth to tell anybody what happened here today, you're a dead man. And if I kill you, <laughs> there'll be no cops to bury. Get your ass out of the bed. Better will leave this car here until tomorrow. I mean, this place is secure, and I'm sure nothing will happen to the car. Precious, I don't like taking chances. When I called the electrician, you said that you know, so that you can come and join Rice and start this car. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. Babe, don't tell me you've been here since that time. And where are you coming from? Come, I don't understand this question from your friend. I hope you've not been discussing me with people. Hi, Saint, is that all you have to say? You abandoned me here and left with an evil woman that has been killing people in the town and you're asking me whether I've been discussing you with people. Is that all you have to say? In this city, there's a temple called the Temple of Sexy Vampires. If you don't want me to sacrifice you on the altar of that temple, you would better keep your mouth shut because the very day you open your mouth to tell anybody what happened here today, you're a dead man. And if I kill you, <laughs> There'll be no cops to bury. An evil woman that has been killing people? Come, I sense. Tell us everything you know about the woman. Tell us where she took you to and what and what did you do with her? Please! I want to know what you know about this woman. Okay, this is it. I have this roommate called Eve and she ran across this guy that took her to Holy Shield and Spa. You know, people saw her enter there. In fact, she actually called me from there. Do you know as we speak now, nobody knows where Eve is. We reported to the police and they said they've gone to the hotel to search every room but did not see her. I know Eve is in there but nobody can find her. So tell us your experience with a woman. It will help in our quest to know what happened to Eve. This is Esther's admission letter into the university. She got admission into Enugu State University. And it goes for celebration. Listen to me. Already, I have booked the Kodi Kede by one tapa to give me first class by one tomorrow morning for celebration. So if I'm not here, Timothy, you will go ahead to pay Esther's school fees to the university, eh? You should tell me to not go with that. Esther is my niece, and I want the best for her. Hey! Don't give me that, please, Timothy. Don't, I beg you. You have a son and a daughter who in the next two years, one of them, if not both of them, will get admission into the university. If you go ahead to pay extra school fees to the university, how are you going to cope when your own children get admission to the university? I am not going to bother myself with what is going to happen in the next two years. 
concerning my son and my daughter's admission into the university. I'm not a wish to begin to project into two years. Projector. Witchcraft, witchcraft projector. I'm not a witch. The important thing now is that Einstein has gotten admission into the university and I'm doing everything humanly possible to push her into the university. Over my dead body. Yeah. Over my dead body. Yeah. Hi! Thank you, me. Eh? I found the husband for Esther. Instead of you to force Esther to marry the man I found for her. You are here telling me that you are going to pay her school fees to the university. He came in. I'm not poor. Do I look like a fool to you? A bad man? I will allow Esther to marry a man that she's not comfortable with because you find, you find him. Marriage maker. The important thing for us is to safeguard Esther's future. And the process of safeguarding that future starts with education. Protecting the future, safeguarding the future. Is open. That is what they say already every day. Education is the key. Every day, every day, you sit very close to radio listening. I, I, you don't, you don't music you're listening to, listening to in, the, in, in, the, in the radio. How do, how do you be able to education is the key? That any woman that has that is not educated in Nigeria in the next few years will be hopeless and stupid. You have, you have, you have, have you been hearing that? All these school girls that are working about without education, you think they have any future? Why are you looking at me? You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Man, if you want this to be the reason why this our marriage will scatter. I want you to understand that I am ready for you and Esther in this house. As for Esther, she must marry the man I found for her. I'm not quite choice. So she must marry the man I found for her. Or she will waste away in this house. Oh God, that couple. It's the only choice. She must marry your bed. Mr. School fees payer. Oh, you chukwa. Oh boy. In your chakwe, in your chakwe, you don't go train your whole mango in this house. But marriage fixer, marriage fixer. You are looking for people that will marry somebody. Who do you get people that can pay bills? All these people that are carrying money up and down. You won't find them. Can you pay bills? Can you bring me coolers? Coolers? Coolers of beer? Can you pay bills? Can you bring me coolers? of beer? Tankers of beer? Can you bring me coolers? 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 You don't need to thank me. You are the head of the home. Believe by your kindness. Anytime you need anything, just call on me and I must abandon whatever I'm doing to come and attend to you. So, what do you need this time? Well, I have a man who wants to adopt a boy of say 10 years old and a girl of say 12 to 13 years old. So I was wondering if we still have people of that age bracket left in the orphanage to be adopted. Well, we have more than enough of the people in that age bracket. So when is the fellow coming? Anytime. As a matter of fact, I'm the one that's been stopping him. Why are you stopping him? You know, the essence of the orphanage is to raise children and allow them to be adopted. As long as you trust him, let him come to the office. We'll show him the processes of the law as it concerns the law of child adoption. But you know, there is um, a condition attached to it. That's the main reason why I invited you here. What is the condition? Well, he said the girl must be a virgin. Embodied. Because I am aware that the country is sexually damaged to the point that there are no longer vagins left. I want to know, do we still have vagins left in the orphanage to be adopted? The truth is, all our girls are vagins. But honestly, I'm not in a hurry to release any child to a man that lays much emphasis on the child's virginity status. Why is that so? Because this man may be amongst the people that would adopt a child and ultimately abuse the child sexually. I just want to be sure that he would do no such thing before I release any child to him. You see? That is the main reason why I chose you to be the matron of my home. 
I am impressed. Thank you. So now we have um, concluded the arrangement that the Avagents left for the man to adopt. I would investigate him and then get back to you. Is that okay? Well, that's nice, but I would like to know who he is so that I can investigate him on my own. Never mind that. I will handle that. A drink? Anything that happened here today must be kept close to your heart. You see, I don't understand why you guys are asking me these questions. What happened was between the lady and I. And I don't want to discuss it with anybody. I sense, are you aware this matter is with the police? And the police will want to know exactly what happened? Or what you know about the case? Did I ever tell anyone of you that I'm in some sort of trouble? I mean, why go into the police to make a complaint? Why? I sense. The lady you followed is an evil lady. She knows something about the disappearance of Eve. She runs an evil hotel where people disappear. Please come off it. Haven't you ladies heard about um, the temple in this town called the Temple of the Sexy Vampires? Temple of the Sexy Vampires? <laughs> What's that? What does that mean? Is that what she told you? Come on, stop asking me about what people told me. Haven't you realized that I'm among the mighty in this town? Come on, stop castigating a lady you don't even know. And um, running um, someone's business down. I have this feeling that your boyfriend has something to do with this. Because he's not telling us anything tangible to make us trace the disappearance of Eve. Gosh. <laughs> Well, uh, the little I've heard about Eve, you know, to be factual with you guys, eh? Eve must have belonged to that temple. And you know, these um, members of this temple have a special way of doing things, you know, they don't intermingle easily. And I believe um, Eve must have done what she ought not to have done, and they killed her. So always say what you know and don't run down people's businesses, please. Hi, Saint. Who told you about this temple? And where's the location of this temple? Listen, girls. As far as I'm concerned, I've satisfied both of you. And I'm out of here. Hi, Saint. What? Sorry, I don't know what you're thinking right now, but I think I sent is hiding something from us. Hiding something like what? <laughs> it's possible that I sent and slept with this evil lady. And I've ordered him not to say anything to anybody. Don't you get it? It's that lady that loose. I mean, how could she possibly open up herself to my man that easily? I don't think so. And besides, I saw the men she sampled as her boys and they are far, far richer than Hyacinth. So I don't think she could sleep with him. Yeah. I think that maybe she took him out on something else and that's what we'll still figure out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These girls are daring me. Esther, why are you resisting me? My children have gone to school and my wife has gone to the market. As far as I'm concerned, two of us are the only two people in the house. We can easily the place right here on the sofa. Why are you withdrawing yourself? Why are you resisting me? Why are you saying no? You took me to the bush. You raped me. I thought I could keep it quiet. I've been keeping it quiet all this while because I know, I, I know what it means. Now I can no longer keep it quiet. So what are you planning? No, are you trying to tell me that you want to open up to people? that has slept with you. If you try that, you have, you have destroyed yourself. I am not the only uncle that is playing with the niece. This is something that is common in almost all the families. There is always one uncle that is playing with one niece. And all these people, they are keeping their own secret. Why would you want to open up the one that we slept in, in, in our family here? 
If you tell anybody that I have been sleeping with you, you have destroyed yourself. Because people will see you as an abominable girl. No man will ever want to marry you. Tell me, is there any man in his, in his right senses that want to marry a woman that is sleeping with your uncle? You are cursed if you, if you tell anybody about it. There is only one way forward. For you to just relax. And we continue playing as secret lovers that we have to come. And I will continue to provide for you. Until that time when one man will come to marry you. Because as far as I'm concerned, you must have your husband. You are a very beautiful woman. I don't need any native doctor to tell me that this time my, my niece will be, will be married one day. But we need to continue to play. Eh? Come now. Uncle, Uncle, stop. Oh. You, you have to stop this rubbish now. I'm pregnant. What did you say? I'm sure you heard me right. I am pregnant. Despite all the hot drinks I've been drinking to see if to remove it, it has refused to, to, to go. It's still there. So, what are you planning? Don't tell me that you are planning to keep the pregnancy. Because that, that would be very stupid. Pregnancy from your uncle, you want to keep it. It's not possible. You will destroy yourself. You must remove the pregnancy. Because that thing you have there is the very definition of unwanted pregnancy and it must go. Abortion in this area is 5,000 naira. But I'm going to give you 10,000 naira. The reason is to make it impossible for any doctor to resist it. Once they see, see money, they will be able to do anything. You go to any of these private hospitals, any of these clinics. Go to a doctor and ensure that this thing is removed. In fact, let me go because you are she couldn't have just dismissed me just like that. I mean, there must be a reason behind that. After all, I gave it to her the way she wanted it. And she liked it. Could have been the problem. I am so disappointed finally that you are a 419. Why would you pick up your call and not say a word? And um, who is this, please? You know, I want to give you another opportunity to prove yourself to me. If you manage to sustain me to orgasm this one time, I'll give you a million naira. Yeah, I know immediately that this is Gladys talking. And I want to ask you a question. Please, what do you want from me? I mean, you've threatened me with all the powers which you've acquired from the temple. And I've decided to be on my own. I don't have powers at all. So please, Gladys, what exactly do you want from me again? I saw the way you dribbled those lousy girls last night. I must tell you, I'm impressed. I mean, come on, come off it. We discussed in the hostel room and you weren't there. So how could you have said such? Do you want to come to where I am or do you want me to come to where you are? <laughs> come on, of course you don't know where I am. I mean, you don't even see me. I mean, how could you come to where I am? It's not possible. You were sitting outside an open bar drinking Gouda and you were putting on a t-shirt with Timberland inscribed on it. As a matter of fact, you just removed your sunglasses. Excuse me, Gladys, this is scary. Are you sure you're a normal human being? Or have I been sleeping with a ghost? You know what? I'll be with you shortly. Hello? What have I got myself into? Let it not be that I've been sleeping with the spirit unknowingly. Oh God, I'm finished. I am finished. Come, 
Let me have the car keys. I have an important business I need to handle. I have to go alone. Okay, boys. Take care of the house. I'm sure she's driving there all alone to go and fuck the guy. If that's a mission for real, tell me, is there any problem with that? How is it your business? I'm surprised you're not bothered. Can't you get it? She's undermining us. Just look at you. What are we doing here? Yes, she's nosing around the whole town looking for a guy that will make her feel like a woman. Come on, Slick. Let me tell you, I am not boasting. I am not bragging. I am far, far better than those guys that's always making her bad. I am better. Listen to me, Slick. If I can handle her just for one night, she will ask me for three days. I know myself. Let me get this straight. Are you trying to tell me that if she opens her legs for you, you're going to screw her? Why not? Not only that, I will make sure I make it a memorable moment for her and she will cherish it all her life. It has become imperative that I must guide you so that you don't go and make a deadly mistake. What do you mean a deadly mistake? You know, by service, you have become a member of the temple of the sexy vampires. She has initiated you into the temple. And that is why she gave us access to her privacy. She knows quite well that we can't betray her. And that is because you need to understand that between her it's time to much we between ourselves. Uh, 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 Slick, I am sorry you are talking a different thing here. We're not talking about betrayal because she knows very well that I cannot betray her. What we're talking about here is a man and a woman relationship. Slick, I have made passes at her. But she will always ignore me. Slick, just look at you. Look at, look, just look at the both of us. My anger is that she's nosing around the whole town looking for guys while we're here. Why? What for? We have become one blood with her. Members of the temple of the sexy vampires do not sleep with one another. I mean, must not have any sexual understanding with your blood relatives. This will automatically cut the flow of fortune from the master. And everything is going to keep working anti-clockwise. Yes. It's going to destroy so many things. So I'm going to advise you, my brother. Never you lust after a mother. Because she's not going to throw herself on you. Of course, she knows we are hot, but come on. She can never do anything that is going to desecrate the temple. Okay? She, she told you all that? I want you to realize you have become a member of the order. Look at you. You wealthy? Yes. And of course, I know you like nothing. But I beg you, do not start something that can destroy you. Don't do that. Never you make that mistake. Honestly, you're scaring me. I have every reason to believe you're not an ordinary woman. So, what do you want from me again? Oh, honey, I am a woman. That's exactly why I still come to you. 
Why not look for some other men that are mightier than I am? Yeah? Come on, you know. You know I'm an orphan. And um, definitely I don't have anyone to defend me in case I run into troubles with you. You know one thing, sweetheart. You're a sincere man. I like you for that. I will not harm you. But you have to promise me one thing. That you would keep all the secrets of life that you know close to your heart. No one must know. And I will turn your life around. If you're doing all these things simply to get me to have sex with you again this night, please, I can assure you it's not gonna work. Honestly, I now see you as a strange woman. And it will be difficult for my man to respond. You know one thing, my dear Heisand. Just agree that you're coming with me. And leave the activation of your manhood to me to handle. Honestly, you're getting me scared. And I feel like shouting and calling for help here. <laughs> oh, God. Why would you want to shout? Why? Oh, God, that would be childish. You know what? I will not fall in love with you. Because I am not allowed to fall in love. But I want to make a proposition for you. You would be my permanent partner that I can call any time, at any point in time. You would answer me and take care of me all through the night. Is it a deal? Honestly, the money you gave me yesterday is still very much intact. In fact, as we are talking right now, it is my car there. So I can just pick my key get to the car, bring it up, and hand it over to you just exactly the way it was when you handed it over to me. No. Listen to me, Heiser. Wait. Sit down. I know very well that your body is yearning for me. And I'm going to answer it. I'll give you one million now. This minute. If only you go with me. I'll turn your life around. I'm still not interested. You listen to me, I sent wait. Okay. 1.5 million will be yours if only you go home with me. It's in my boot. This minute, cash. It's yours. Okay, okay, okay. If I must do it, 2 million or no deal. Deal? I'll give it to you. Immediately. If only you agree to go home with me. You know, as a matter of fact, we will not go to the hotel anymore. We will go to my house. Because I want to have you all through the night. No distractions from anyone. <laughs> it's okay. But on one condition. Which is? That I must have the money cash. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't tell me you're afraid. Oh no. You know what? I am not an ingrate. I keep to my own side of the bargain. Hmm? I'll give you anything you want, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Just agree that you would make me so comfortable this night. All right, no problem. Is it well, a deal? let me take your word. No <laughs> I'm a very busy man. I'll give you just one minute to tell me why you brought me here. Very well then. Here is two million naira. My check is as good as cash. And what is the money for? You don't need to tell me that you're a principled man. Because it's written all over you. And that's the more reason why I like you. You know, principled men are relatively unsexed. Because they hardly talk to women. I want you to spend the night with me. And that's my offer to that request. I want to give it to you just the way you like it. And I'm sure as a medical doctor, you have all the experience to handle me like no one has ever done. Please don't say no.
You are a disgrace to womanhood. <laughs>